We know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. gentlemen to join my house inspirational reality radio show with a touch of recovery a reality radio show where nothing is left unsaid and no one who says it is insignificant i'm joined here by my co-host Lita robinson Welcome hey how are you today to another sunday uh, happy easter happy resurrection an amazing, day amazing amazing easter sunday yes today. it is yes it is all right good to see you i want to thank you all out there who are listening and viewing out there um and are part of our the joy that we have in our house today, if you're getting out of service or if you're going to catch this uh, at a later time, we want to mm-hmm. thank you for being part of our viewers and audience out there. We couldn't do this without you, and I hope that you become a part of us by engaging with us on twitter.com mm-hmm. backslash join my house. Send us tweets with questions or comments. Uh, find us on Facebook backslash join my house. Uh, become a fan and get up to date lineups of guests and info. Or just, you know, engage with us here on latalklive.com uh, where we have archived all of our shows here and we've had some amazing guests. Yes, we have. And today we're going to recap on some of our amazing guests. Yeah, and do an it's, it's you today. and I today where God said, listen, I want you two to talk to the audience and get to know the people a little bit more and with Van Eric today and we... We have a special, special guest today. Special guest today. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and I, I just want to say thank you for being a part of my of my life, Lolita, mm-hmm. and, and a part of this show and just a... Wow, we've come... I feel we've come a long ways yeah, now. Yeah, we have. We Is this our sixth month now, right? We've been this, doing this six months? This is our 26th episode. Wow, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> I thought we were just going to do it a month or two and just, you know, get the experience, but... God had other plans, and I'm I'm glad that um, we're a team here. Same here. I just put one foot in front Ebony of the other. Ebony and Ivory. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, we, we just put one foot in front of the other. And that's we, right. And, and as long as we're faithful, you know, like uh, Pastor was saying to you, you know, God blesses us. He'll, he'll find us. Well, and, what have you learned during this time before we recap on last week? What well, what, What's it been like, this experience doing the show? You got to tell people how it all came about because you were really promoting me, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, through through Deborah Hader, right. one of the publicists um, that we were working on uh, for your press releases, um, told us about this network and got us to come on down. I came down here to watch one of her artists come and promote herself on one of the shows mm-hmm. and uh, introduced me to Van Eric. Uh, at that time, Van Eric approached me, and I remember him telling me about this network and didn't know who he was hey, he kept man. telling me about this network which is our producer here mm-hmm. and he told us about his, his network and said if if you'd be interested in in, in um, having a show here let me know and I just totally completely dismissed it mm-hmm. didn't even think twice about it uh, but then Deborah approached me and said that she'd be interested they offered her a, 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 a spot here on the show and right. said you know she was um, wasn't ready to do something like that but thought of me of coming on the show and doing it, and because of Deborah. So you didn't. Know, so did Deborah know that Van Eric had asked you to do? No, it? no. Okay, no. so that was. I spoke to him uh, while she was in here promoting her guest, okay. and I was out there on the. Okay, the, so the foyer. so neither one had spoken. So that's no. God. That's how God moves. So I she came. That. Okay. Yeah, so she came and approached me, and 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 I kind of thought about it and said, you know, that's not really for me, but I would love to go and find out more about it. Mm-hmm. I had the meeting with uh, Van Eric. And uh, I believe Richard Mm -hmm. and just kind of told me about their network and told me about um, this Ali Talk Live and what it is exactly. And I found it very interesting. And I went home, prayed about it. And it just so happened that you called me at the moment that I was at home praying about what this was about. Right. You called me and I said, hey, you know, there's this there's this uh, radio station, Ali Talk Live, that's interested in me maybe having a show there. You dismissed it as well the first time. I don't really listen to it. It's kind of yeah. like we had so many doors closed in our so face. So many things. Yeah, you so know, much was going so on. So much, so many doors had closed, and it was kind of like whatever. <laughs> but the second <laughs> yeah. time I mentioned it to yeah. you, you were like, you have to do that. Yeah, I we got to be a part of this. Right. And I think, like you said, it was God confirming. Yeah. And sometimes we don't listen the first time because I know I didn't. No. But God keeps, like, 
pastor was saying today, he keeps engaging with us. Yes, he does. He does. He chases it down because it's both. It's out of our comfort zone. And hopefully by us sharing with the audience, you know, I always ask people how they got to where they are. I think so many people are waiting for a lightning bolt to come down. Right. To tell them this is what you're supposed to do. Well, you know, things that present hasn't themselves. To me. No, it hasn't. You know, we've just been following the road and then doing this. It's a whole nother ball game. This and, experience and this whole experience has allowed us to meet so many yes, different people. It has from different walks of life yes. that are really giving back and are inspirational, and just ministering at least to me directly. Mm -hmm. It got us allowed. To, it uh, uh, allowed us to bring Pastor Jeff. Tim yeah, Lynn from right. Bridges Church, and right. now I'm a part of his church. And you've had other pastors on. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Reverend Pastor, Long. Reverend, Reverend Long, Long has been on. and, and uh, Pastor Darwin from Triumph Church, right. which is um, Paul Obels from Obel Ministries. That's right. His, his pastor Paul's came a minister himself. Paul himself. Right. I mean, it's brought a really big network of, of good people. And it also what it does, it gives credibility to this show for us. Oh, I, because, yes. you know, it's it's always important to me uh, as a believer. I, you know, I've been walking with Christ longer, a little longer than you have, and you're coming in. But it's important to have like a covering. And I'm hoping that, you know, our pastors that come on are bearing witness to what we're doing. And I think Because they, you don't want to be long rangers out there. You want to have accountability and people to keep you in check. And they have. I believe they've even said it themselves. Right. You know how. They've been really blessed coming on. Yeah. And they've been, and in turn, been blessing us. Yes, and I think they that's have. the whole relationship between... Uh, God and us and God putting us on this earth is mm -hmm. for us to have these relationships. That's right. That's right. And, you know, we had an amazing guest last week. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. We really clicked. Oh, I knew. Oh, oh man, my gosh. I, I mean, we really clicked. Like mm -hmm. I said, it was like a sister separated at birth. I mean, there's so much that you go through as an artist that only other artists, well, like martial arts, it doesn't matter, producing, um, mm -hmm. our guest later on was a student. And unless you go have people that know what you're going through, it's you know it it just helps to submit to, to, to I'm sorry to solidify what you're going through and to have that support and that's what happened with with Angel with Angel yeah yeah Angel came on the show Angel is a singer songwriter mm -hmm. and also uh, has a ministry called uh, a Stronger Me Ministry yeah she does and she released well she already had released her CD a Stronger Me yeah and got an opportunity to sing off her album which was which was really amazing so if you missed it. Um, I put the recap on Joy in My House uh, Facebook fan page. So if you find uh, Facebook backslash Joy in My House, you'll find the recap of Angel mm -hmm. and David Minns performing live here on Joy in My House. And she also has an upcoming event coming I'm up. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go. You know what? It's the thing that's so beautiful about it is Angel and I do the exact same thing, even though we're not the exact same thing. We we reach different audiences. We have different kind of styles. But that's we're the body of Christ. And there can't be, she was really impressed that I was not intimidated by her or jealous or put off that I was so engaging and embracing of her be, being a singer. Well, of course, why not? We, It doesn't matter if you put 10 singers in here. We're all different. Mm -hmm. We all are going to touch different uh, segments of the world. We can't all reach one thing. I mean, like in here, you might like McDonald's. I might like Burger King. Van mm -hmm. Eric might like, um, uh, what do you like, Van Eric? <laughs> <laughs> well, I stay away from the fast food. Okay, uh, um, change <laughs> now. Put you in there, huh? So, but on the days that nature's splurge. candy. <laughs> okay. You know, every now and then, the sweet tooth gets me. So, but um. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so you know, yeah. you, there's something for everybody. Exactly. And so I like to embrace brace people when they come on because it only enhances what we're doing. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I think more in the secular world, the minute you meet another singer, or yeah. another another musician, or another competitor, right. It, you create that that distance with them and right. it becomes a competition. It becomes that person is my enemy or that person is my competitor. Right. But I think in the body of Christ, if you really stand yeah, we, on Christ. That's a good point. You guys are more engaging. And, and I saw that just in oh, you guys yeah. just talking. Yeah, because we understood each other. I knew what she was going through and I wished her well. You're right. That's the difference between being in entertainment, which is has its place. I take my hat off to those people who go up there and, and on idol and voice and I, I all could. this competition <laughs> and the splash. I was cracking up. Have oh, you seen that? No, I heard about oh, it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's hilarious. Is it? All the money in the world would not get me to jump <laughs> off that dog on <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But you know, yeah. 
So yeah, so it was it was great. Like I said, we've got some amazing people to have Angel come on and perform live with David, and and then also meeting David, uh, David Minns, who's 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 yeah her her, her accompaniment, and I guess he writes music with her too. He I writes think. music with her and, and manages her as well. Okay, to have him be so faithful to her and not asking for any of the praise was very impressive to me too. Me too. And it said a lot serving. about it said a lot about Angel as well. Well, that's how you've been with me, so I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. You and have I, been, but I I saw that. In them, which kind of really impressed me, mm-hmm. really impressed me mm-hmm. that that he's very faithful. And I go, do you want to come on and speak as well? And he's like, no, don't worry, that's mm-hmm. Angel's thing. That's her thing. And yeah. I think uh, you've always said that for everybody to have a place and for everybody to know their place, right. in order for their gifts to shine and not to be stepping on anybody's toes. Right, I think it's right. very important. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to going. So we're gonna go out there, right? Yes, it is. A, I'm gonna uh, give, give it her a plug. Give yeah. her a plug. It's a Stronger Me Ministry. I like it's that a Stronger women's, Me uh, Women's Conference with Angel. Uh, it is Saturday, April 6, 2013 at 9 a.m. It goes to 2.30. Tickets are about $40. But it's for women. Sorry, it is for guys. women. Yeah. And it includes lunch uh, at the California Community Church in Aurora Hills at the Sheraton Hotel. Mm-hmm. So if you want more information, you can find her at astrongerme.com. Or you can go to her Facebook page, her Facebook fan page, which is Angel Smite uh, Facebook fan page. Uh, or you can come on to our Facebook fan page and all the information is there as Mm -hmm. well. We want to support, like you said, all of our guests. That's right. All of our guests, whether they're musicians, actors, uh, uh, speakers, uh, authors. um, Homemakers, whatever. We're going to have a student. I mean, but you're going to do a recap a little later on, right? So we can kind of go over our guests, but you're right. Yeah, but we want to come out and support each other. Um, like you said, don't be intimidated by other people who do the same thing you do. Just the opposite. We're here to, I always say I'm a student first and I need to mm-hmm. learn from everybody. I know when we had uh, Brett Lewis, who, oh my God. who's a, a veteran <laughs> in, 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 in radio broadcast. In radio broadcasting, I was ready to, to, to absorb any uh, criticism he gave me, any mm-hmm. constructive criticism he was willing to give me. I right. was ready to take it like a sponge. And we're going to get together with him hopefully uh, next month and just have some I coffee. I hope so, yeah, because he's going to, he's going to, but that is, that's so important out there. Don't be intimidated with other people. Mm-hmm. I don't care you looking at these reality shows and people competing, and there's a place for that. But you can learn from one another. You can mentor from other people. In fact, you want people in your life who are further ahead or doing That's more. That's what I want, yes. I learned a lot from, I'm a little bit more laid back. You're the go-getter. But Angel is just stepping out there doing her thing. I thought, okay, hey, yeah. you know, I need to step up my game. So don't be intimidated. Learn from each other. And kind of make, a, I'm, I'm hoping to get a community of people right. that we can all kind of like do a barter thing, help one another out. And I think that's very important. I think, like you said, that's what builds the community up. Yes, it does. We, and and allows you to have even more credibility. Yes. Even, you're already accredited as it is, but to have that other person come on board, you guys help each other out and give each other credibility. And I think that is so important, especially in the body of Christ, to it is, have that relationship. To have that relationship. And that's what we want to give our audience. We're hoping that you listen each week and take something for, for your own life to step out, even though it might seem small, like, like the radio thing. I mean, we've taken little tiny steps. These steps have been small. They've been very small, but they're building and they're building. And we don't know what God is doing, but we're stepping out. And we want to encourage you to do the same. Yeah. And like I said, you know, we just mentioned this is our 26th episode. Mm-hmm. 26. This is the first time that we actually have an episode without a guest. Uh, yes, it is. So, so 26 guests yes, we've had at well, least. Uh, we give have. Or take. Yeah. And being that it's Easter, we try to get some pastors in, but, you know, they have to do their thing. Right. But God is saying, hey, I'm here. That's right. What who else do you need? <laughs> who else do you need? All right? right. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is here. So Yeah, so I'm very excited for today. Mm-hmm. And I want you guys out there to be excited as well and engage with us. You can follow us on Facebook backslash join my house. Or you can call the studio direct at LA Talk Live. The mm-hmm. number is 323 323- Two four seven seven four four three. Our lines are open with any questions or comments, and become a fan of our Facebook fan page and get up to date lineups of guests and information. You can find our website at www. Joinmyhouse.com and it is uh, designed by uh, one of the board of directors here, which is Paul Obel mm-hmm. out of uh, Pro Advantage. Check his website out if you're interested in a web. Uh, website as well. He's done some great work for us. And we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to come back with a very special guest of mine and Lolita's yeah. when we come back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joy in My House. Stay tuned. I'm always 
is in one of mine. Constant spins, not trusting. He opens doors to go in, but I'm afraid to depend upon him. I bring him ashes for gold. He starts to work, I put him on hold. Still, he's faithful to me, cause he's blind as to see. I'm praising God. He's all to me, my life, my love. He sets me free, I love him. Any time of day, I close my eyes and I... Do you suffer from degenerative diseases such as high blood pressure, diabetes, fibroid tumors, high cholesterol, genital herpes, or a plethora of other diseases that rob you of a quality life? If so, then visit the website of herbalist Tahuti Ma'atra at dhealthstore.com and open the door to natural healing at an affordable price. dhealthstore.com has over 1,800 products created by herbalist Tahuti Ma'atra, specifically designed to help you heal the natural and safe way. At D- dhealthstore.com you'll find everything from herbal formulas and cleanses such as Tahuti's famous full body detox as well as herbal teas, extracts natural body butters, lotions creams, children's products, hair care products and of course sexual enhancement products for both men and women so visit the website of Tahuti Ma'atra dhealthstore.com or call toll free at 1-888-823-9416 dhealthstore.com Are you ready to enjoy the Maui lifestyle? You can have it all by owning real estate on the paradise island of Maui. Dennis Rush, a 22-year Maui resident and real estate broker, brings his wealth of experience and market knowledge to add value to your Maui real estate understanding, providing a level of service as unique and exceptional as the island of Maui itself. The magical island of Maui was voted the most exclusive resort island in the world by Condé Nast Traveler and keep in mind Maui is only a simple non-stop flight away. Hawaii Business Magazine Top 100 Realtors awarded Dennis Rush the 2011 fourth top realtor on the island of Maui. Go to www.dennisrush.com to view all of the amazing properties currently available in the Maui MLS system. Whatever your needs or desires, Dennis Rush will provide a private consultation For any Maui properties your heart desires, you will be in good hands. Once again, go to www.dennisrush.com. That's www.dennisrush.com. Contact Dennis today to start your Maui lifestyle now. Dennis Rush, proud sponsors of the Dawn Christie Show and LA Talk Live. Young Connection, your one-stop connection for all your graphic design and commercial printing needs. Young Connection is a full-service printing and media design company dedicated to providing the highest level of customer service and satisfaction. Young Connection provides swift response and rapid turnaround services for banners, brochures, business cards, letterheads, church bulletins, funeral programs, flyers, logo design, posters, and much, much more, all at an affordable price. Young Connection, the official printing company of LA Talk Live. Give them a call at 310-491-3336. That's 310-491-3336. Or visit their website at www.youngconnection.com. That's www.youngconnection.com. Young Connection Printing and Media Services, proud sponsors of LA Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Join My House, inspirational reality radio show with a touch of recovery. 
I'm joined here by my co-host, Lolita Robinson. How you doing? Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Easter today. That's what an right. amazing day. Uh-huh. And I want to thank and I want to introduce our special guest today, Seth Robinson. Welcome to the show. Hey guys, Seth. good to be here. Good. <laughs> it's it's uh, very interesting uh, the way I know Seth yeah. uh, because Seth has been the catalyst of me having a relationship with Lolita yes. and then Lolita bringing me uh, to Christ. It was uh, because of Seth and because of Lolita wanting a martial arts instructor for her son Seth that I got an opportunity to meet Seth. This was uh, many moons ago. We're not going to go how many moons. Yeah, uh, how old were you, Seth, when you started? I would probably say sometime late elementary school, around fifth grade, a long wow. time ago. And how old are you now? Uh, I just turned 19 years old. Oh, so right. just turned 19. Wow. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. And you were visiting uh, Osama, which who was yeah. on the show, which and is Lolita's producer on Changes. We met uh, two boys in the neighborhood who actually went to the class first and yes. they referred us to you. So. Yeah, and then you guys came and watched one of my testing it was examinations. was Alex and uh, Sergio. Yeah, Alex and yeah. Sergio, yeah. That's right. Espinoza, my mm -hmm. neighbors, mm -hmm. the twin boys that I started teaching because my kids had come of age for me to be uh, ready to teach them, but mm -hmm. I couldn't just teach my kids because they would just say, oh, I'm not going to listen to daddy. That's right. But when the other kids listen, then they would follow suit. So I said, I'm going to invite them to come and take class. And then they came and invited you on one of their promotional examinations. I rented out the clubhouse mm -hmm. that, that day. And you guys No, came. you were in your backyard. I was teaching out of my backyard, but we rented the oh, clubhouse that's right. for, that's the right. testing for the day. testing. That's right. That's right. You guys attended that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I did a head break and I have that on video. Oh, boy. And, I never did watch it. And you did not watch no. it. I have to do it again just so you watch <laughs> and it. And you better make sure you know what you're doing. <laughs> I think mean, I'm a little older, a little slower now. I don't know if I can do it. But that's how I, how I got introduced to Seth, and mm -hmm. Seth was my student for, for many years. How did you like and taking martial that, arts? That class was a great part of my life. taught me a lot about discipline, respect, and just persevering, and that definitely never forget it. It, it was, it was mm -hmm. impactful, even out of my backyard. I mean, yeah. I was, especially back then, I was very arrogant, so I was very intense. I was very uh, structured, and... Um, that's how I was taught. I didn't know any better. I didn't know how to be soft. There was only one way to teach and mm -hmm. the way I was taught. And I remember being very hard on all the kids, including my children who were in the class. I was very hard on them. <laughs> Sebastian was three. I was like, oh, my oh gosh. My he was gosh. so cute. <laughs> three years oh, old. He yeah. Was, my son was three years old. Well, do you think that that's helping you today, Seth? We're, you know, we're going to be talking a, you know, a, a lot about, do you think that that training, disciplining and persevering is helping you today and where you are in life? I think it is, yes. You want to tell the audience? How so? What, yeah. Just uh, just to learn how to just keep going even when it's get kind of tired and feel like it's want to stop. Just keep going ahead and pushing through it. Mm -hmm. And and also just to respect uh, people who's in authority or whoever's been placed in front of me and just to keep going. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad you said that because even when I see you at church, you still bow to me. Mm -hmm. now, and bowing was a very formal way of respecting your master. Mm -hmm. Till this day, I run into people at the market. I still bow. Mm -hmm. My master, my grandmaster, when I run into them, no matter how many years later, I still bow to mm -hmm. them. They, like you said, they were a big part of my life. And uh, it's important to always have that, that, that type of respect. Uh, I was somewhere with my mother. <laughs> And we were talking about how children nowadays don't respect their elders no, like they the way they used to. Right. I mean, something as simple as opening a door right. is lost. But it seems like you've done a really good job, Lolita, because Seth, till this day, for being the younger generation, mm -hmm. is very respectful, is very uh, considerate. Well, I'm, you know, I'm glad. I want, want you and Van Eric to weigh in here. Um, I've been teaching Seth how to open the doors for me and to open, you know, car doors and to, you know, to be a gentleman. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a show not too long ago that in this generation, women are kind of put off by that and men don't feel like that they need to do that. Do you guys think that that's out of date or what? For, for Seth's standpoint, because his dad's not here Well, um, as men. Well, unfortunately, in a way, the, the new generation is not... Um, taught that so both young men and women um, go throughout the day without even realizing something as simple as holding the, a guy holding the door mm -hmm. for uh, a, a woman that they don't even know they don't even know each other and the woman saying well thank you mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, I've on a ca- many occasions opened the door for a young lady and they just keep on going. Wow. And sarcastically, I said, well, you welcome. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. You know, um, even opening the door for them when they get in the car. So, the, you know, a lot of because of California and everybody basically does drive. So mm-hmm. the average young woman is so used to open their own door, even if they have a male passenger. And, you know, yeah. and when I go about doing it, it was like, hold on, you know, they they like not aware of it. So no. it's kind of sad. It is kind of sad because I think it's not valued as much as it used to be having manners or, or, or consideration. And I, I think you make a very valid point that mm-hmm. a lot of women drive, but not just a lot of women nowadays are more independent. Yeah. And so they, they don't feel know how to take empowered. That. So, yeah. So they don't know how to value that. They don't they almost don't like it because they feel like a man is maybe trying to control um, for us and the way we were taught. It wasn't to try and control or manipulate. Mm-hmm. It was actually the opposite is being a servant to your wife and i think it's important that we serve our wives or i serve our partners or we serve our children mm-hmm. because that's the same respect we want back we want yeah. them to also listen and serve us and, and, and correct me and correct me if i'm wrong because uh, i w- I'm, I'm under the impression the reason why <clears throat> like when you're walking down the street with your mom your sister your girlfriend or just a, a lady that you know mm-hmm. having her on the inside has two meanings behind it. One shows that you're protecting her mm-hmm. because if I'm walking towards you and you're on the inside, if I wanted to get to you, that means I have to go in front of him first. Wow. Right. So yeah, he, can ex- he can actually stop me from getting to her. Mm-hmm. Um, the street and, you know, uh, meaning is, you know, when a woman, not really the streets, but when a woman's on the outside, mm-hmm. That's letting me know that she's available to be approached because they're not a couple. Mm-hmm. Right. She's not married to him. Oh, okay, things that. like that. that. You know, know that. so, so um, getting the kind of a, you, know. you know, so for a guy to get upset because a lot of young people don't know that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I tell him, I say, well, because you know the way you're walking towards me, that's letting me know that she's available. And he be like, what you mean? Well, and I explain it to me like, oh, well, and they don't really. Yeah, it's a, care. It's, they really what, don't care. What, but it's <laughs> important. I'm glad to because Howell had to open the door for me. Well, go ahead. What were you? But saying? that goes back to yeah. not being attentive. Right. You're attentive because you're aware of the other person. That's but a good because point. we're so individualized in this, especially California mm-hmm. and LA living, that it's all about us. It's all about me. Right. So as long as I look good and I'm walking down that street and I feel good, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But when you're with somebody, it doesn't matter if it's my daughter or my friend or my wife. Mm-hmm. I have to be attentive to them. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why you put them on the inside because you, you are protecting them to a certain degree. doesn't mean you're trying to control them. doesn't mean you're trying to manipulate them. And But you want to be attentive to them. And I think that's what my mom and my father always taught me. And, their and he did taught. well because you always would open the doors for me. And I was just be like, <laughs> I'm so used to opening my own door. But I'm letting him do it now because it is a sense of, of allowing someone to, to be served. It's like Christ washing people's feet. You know? Exactly. We, our pastor talked about that, not today specifically, but in a Bible study. I didn't even realize how during that time the feet were so nasty because of walking in. He talked about that there was uh, the sewers and everything was in the open street. I, I didn't think about that. And then when you walk in that kind of environment, the feet were the worst. Mm-hmm. So and to wash somebody's so feet. So to wash somebody's feet was very humbling. Was, was very beyond humbling. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, what what yeah. were you gonna say? Well, well I did want to touch with Seth right. and say, well, what did you think? What what do you think about when you walk with a, a a girlfriend or you know, just a friend or or a girlfriend or you know, your friends being attentive? What do you think about that, Seth? Yeah, like sometimes uh, in this generation, um young women could find being Respectful in that kind of way, kind of weird in mm-hmm. a way, and like, whoa, what did you do that for? But <laughs> How funny is that? That's yeah, so it's just the way, kind of the way things yeah. are nowadays, and especially at like I could see it at my college or at um, just when I'm with friends or anything like that. So I, I usually just try to be nice, nice as I can, without coming off as like trying to be some kind of night or a <laughs> oh, weirdo uh, you, yeah okay were you gonna well, say that ask, eric what were you, you were starting to yeah. say something well um yeah i was gonna say i almost lost my train of thought that um it's just it's just um the women should 
embrace the the womanhood. It's mm. just being a woman, allowing the man to do those th- type of things. It's not we men saying that okay, we inferior that you can't right. be our equal. Right. It's just we acknowledging the fact that you are um, a woman, a mm. female, and that what that's what many. Um, things that a woman is mm-hmm. to us and to the world. So, you know, um, you you women are the um, the seed uh, uh, of man. You right. know, what I mean, you 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 give birth to man. So, we had that. We should have that consciousness about us, uh, about far as protecting you mm-hmm. because of that. And you know, so I'm but, glad that you guys are saying that for him because right. being a, a single mom, his dad is not with us anymore. I, you know, from a male standpoint. So I, my opinion is if you have a woman who can't accept that and is so independent, I'm like, then maybe she's not for you. I, I would agree. You know, and not, not making only, her not, bad. Not only that, it's just that, you know, unfortunately, she's just a, a, a product of her environment. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. that, you know, um, in God's it. time, you know, if you're that right person in her life, you can show her that. That's and then beautiful. she can, you know, be aware of, oh, okay, mm-hmm. this is why... Um, He's doing this uh, for me because mm-hmm. I, I'm supposed to be this type of woman. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a woman. I'm a female. So this is what a, a woman, a lady, is supposed to be like because mm-hmm. you know, a lot of them don't. Well, let me That's ask great. this to Seth. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that I age myself when I meet a young lady. And when I mean young, I mean younger than me, especially his generation. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we have, we're going to get a, a guest named Sarah who's going to come on the show when I met her. Um, she's about 19, 20 years old. And I shook her hand. Mm-hmm. I said, hello, how are you? I'm, I'm Joelle Ramirez. And she kind of got standoffish. And I know that ages me. So I was going to ask you, Seth, when you meet a young lady, <laughs> how do you say hello? How do you, oh, that, that yeah. smile went to, uh, <laughs> when you meet a young lady, what, um, how do you engage? How do you guys say hello nowadays? Because for me, is you shake their hand, you say hello. But I know that it dates me. It, it shows that I'm <laughs> not that I'm old. <laughs> How do you guys meet one another? When you guys say hello to you, they're introducing you to somebody. They're introducing you to so and so. Do you shake her hand? Do you give her a hug? What do you guys do? You guys just kind of say hi at a distance. Well, if it's the first time I meet them, it's probably just handshake. Oh, you do? Hey, okay, how's good. It going? I'm, well, I'm glad to hear yeah. that you guys still. Some form of touch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or high five, something. Uh, if it's the first time meeting them, just being introduced. Or even just a wave. Like, nice well, to I know because cause of cell phones nowadays and so much texting. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I doubt that it almost seems to me that you guys don't even say hello anymore. You just send her a text. Hi. I'm so and so, and that person's right across the street, right across the way from you. Oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 I have friends that text each other <laughs> when they're in the same room together. That's just so it's, odd to me. It gets, it can, it's kind of annoying, but yes, because you know, they, 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 they holding out <laughs> secrets. But I, the college that I, I go to, I'm gonna give a shout out, Long Beach City College. Okay. And then the student lounge, I, I just, you know, I, I, I observe um, mm-hmm. the people and. Um, what they I see them them doing when they are being introduced to one another, they you know how you doing like that. Um, very seldom do I see them actually uh, embrace one another with mm-hmm. a handshake or anything like that, um, which is kind of odd. And um, some of them don't know how to accept the fact that the right. human contact. Mm-hmm. So you know from, when from uh, what I've seen with goodbyes, there's still a lot of contact, like hug goodbyes. Yeah. Uh, handshakes, oh, okay. high yeah. fives when you're saying goodbye, but when you're greeting, it's just, oh, hey, let's go. Or yeah, even what? Like so, that. what's, okay, we say, what's, okay, we see the hello and goodbye, but what you, but like in between, everybody's texting, right? There's no real, not everybody, I shouldn't say that, but. There's usually, there could still be a good amount of conversation mm-hmm. in a group, but mm-hmm. yeah, uh, technology, being on Facebook on our phones, and <laughs> I, I, I'm guilty of that too. Uh, just, play a, uh, just a huge part in just your socializing mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. socialization well Seth I got a yeah. question for you because um seems like the generation of now mm-hmm. when a guy is interested in in a certain female they may have a tendency of asking her out by text see and I that's kind of that, impersonal I think that is so be. impersonal yes uh, I've had friends who've uh, broken up with girls over text. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. I mean, they used to do shows about that back oh. in my days, how funny that somebody broke up with somebody on a post-it. Yeah. Now it's it's actually normal. It's just, yeah, it's fear of 
having to be face to face and yeah you know, you, with texting you don't have to see them you don't have to you don't be exactly. as nervous you have plenty yeah. of time to think about it like who i wonder how this sounds see to me yeah. that's so impersonal because you articulate it the right way like i did at the beginning of the show the first episode i articulated the show i knew the exact words i outlined it it was perfect exactly what i what i would like this show to be about was written down but that's not really what the show was about yeah the show was about us being transparent and we talked about earlier before coming on the show today about having that transparency and having the show develop into what it is i think same in a conversation when you talk to somebody it's not always what's articulately correct or gra grammatically correct it's what's from your heart and sometimes exactly. that can't be expressed exactly on a text yeah. a text and because oh, i like to i like to say that if, if unless you are um your written your written comprehension <laughs> is very well a poet right you know what I mean? while you when you text and just text somebody um your text messages can be interpreted in the wrong manner that's what i hear oh, yeah. you have oh, to, you yeah. know what i mean cuz you can't you can't be sarcastic over text yeah <laughs> yeah you can't work. show happiness <laughs> you know you got to use smiley faces and yeah. little gestures to show that you know the the text that you're sending that person is a happy text yeah. And right, things that's of that true, nature. Huh, yeah. So it, it's you got to be a, a very well um, written person, a person that to knows how to it. write yeah. to to mm -hmm. show emotions. And even a lot of friends of mine would agree that who, even though we all text and Facebook and all these things, we we still a lot of us still agree that there's really nothing quite like just a good like conversation. I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's yeah not, you're general. It's, it's, you miss. Well, you, you have to be. You have to be up with the times, but you don't want to lose the art of communicating. Right. Like right. you're finding out because, well, you need to give your school a shout out. Where do you go? I go to California State University of Long Beach. All right. LBC. Okay, yeah. LBC. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> the, the LB. Long Beach City really took me through a lot of stuff with writing, and it's a good uh, but like you're now talking about job interviews. I, I mean, this conversation is going totally <laughs> different than what we thought. I know. But, I still you know, have an outline of what this show was supposed but to be that's about, okay, but I think but this is important. Yeah, for the young people. I mean, for job interviews, and you were talking about that. What were some of the challenges with you that you feel when? It's just everything nowadays is just so digitalized. It's so easy to do everything online. You don't have to talk to people. So the thought of doing a job interview and just having to go in to actually speak to somebody and and actually having to worry about what they think of you, it's, it's a little bit different nowadays because everything is just done on the computer. It's yeah, so easy. Huh? LinkedIn, I, I guess now LinkedIn, you put all your resume in mm -hmm. there, headhunters exactly. find exactly. you. So how do people, in other words, he's telling me, you know, I, I want to go on these interviews, but I don't know what to say. How do I, you know? How to present myself. Yeah. It's something I'm not well, as they, familiar with. Yeah, they do have, uh, um, yeah, they do have um, courses where you can... Um, if you go to the uh, um, employment agency, mm -hmm. they have classes where they teach um, people what to do during the uh, interview, mm -hmm. uh, per se. Uh, so, but um, one thing for certain, two things for sure, if, do not, <laughs> for no reason, do not go to an interview with your pants hanging down. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you know, you have to be, you know, and do your research on, on that particular job. You know, if it's a construction type job, mm -hmm. you know, if, even if you're in a suit, have, you know, have have the, your work clothes in the trunk of your car, in the mm -hmm. back seat of your car, because, you know, that person that's, that's interviewing you might say, well, um, let me see what you can do. Right. right. You know, I mean, um, I'm, I, that's what I do when that's what I do, did back in the, in Philadelphia, and uh, I went to a real estate agency, and um, the, the woman that was interviewing me, her cassette tape was stuck in in in, her, in the player, mm -hmm. so um, she asked me if I knew how to get it out. <laughs> so I did, I, you know, I pulled it out, but um, but the tape was stuck mm -hmm. inside, and I asked her, I said, "Is this a, is this tape in, um, important to you?" She said, "No." So I just took a pair of scissors. No, I had. I think I had a pocket knife. I just cut it off, and mm -hmm. that's how I got the job. That's how I got hired. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know yeah I mean? Interesting. So you know, my my point is, when you do go out there, do your research on the job that you're going to, because um, you may be asked um, to perform mm -hmm. right there on the spot. You never know, and don't, don't even know it. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I do want to get back to a little bit of the topic. Today is Easter Sunday. Yeah, it is Easter. But, you know, I was just kind of taking all this in and we prayed about it because, like we said, we 
usually have guests and yeah. you do such a phenomenal job and he really does. Hoel goes out and he meets people. He writes up, an, you know, kind of a format and <laughs> so you. that we have a direction. So today it's, it's a little bit more free flowing, but when we were talking, I got the feeling of communicating and being open and like we're talking about our different experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to do that today for Easter Sunday because I know that it's a, it's a special day. Families are getting together. But to tell you the truth, I didn't really have that great of a weekend. I had a very, very down weekend. Very down. I'd have to concur with that. And um, Seth and I went out to breakfast yesterday. And just life can just be very, very hard. And I wanted to just kind of talk to the audience, you know, weigh in with Van Eric and see. I mean, life is hard. I was really missing my husband and my brother, my youngest brother, him not being here. My girlfriend just lost her son, 25 years old. He was diagnosed with cancer. Wow. Eight months later, he was gone. I know you can identify. I mean, it's just hard. I don't know where the next, the the economy is, is where it is. My work is not where it was. I mean, there's just so much going on. I was just really down last night. And same here. I think you I've know, had the same experience, and I know a lot of you out there probably are going through the same thing. Times are tough, and, you know, when mm -hmm. tragedies hit and times are already difficult as they are, it seems to pile on. Yeah, it really seems it to does. kind of weigh, wear you out. How about you, Van Eric? Where well, are you? Well, that, that um, is, to me, a test of faith mm -hmm. when things happen like that because, you know, um, both my parents are, are deceased. And I um, just recently lost one of my sisters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, that's just God's way of um, ha letting us remember those people in our lives. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, it's a human uh, reaction and emotion to, to feel sad at some times. And, um, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, my mother's birthday is the 4th of August. Mine's the 5th. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll just walk into a restaurant. And order uh, and have a order a table for two. Mm. And um, if they ask me, I say I'm about to have lunch or dinner with my mom. So um, and I let them know that she's deceased. So you know, I said if I, whatever you see me do, just let me be because mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you know, I have a little talk with my mom. I said, you know, I just met this girl, mom, and um, you, know, you do that in front of in the restaurant. In, in the restaurant, I got to come see this. And, uh, and wow. I said, what do now you think really about her? You know, so <laughs> if I get if I bite my tongue while I'm eating or something, something weird happens, then I know she doesn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> she just, you know, this, that's her way of letting wow. me know. Well, I don't think that's, you know, she's she's rightful. But if if everything goes well, then I know that okay, mom likes her. That's so and cool. And stuff like that. So you know. Yeah, because I'm going through the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. my uh, one of my best friends. I mean, a really you best friend of it, mine, yeah. uh, Davy, just passed away, and uh, his wife and him had got tickets to a Dodger game. This Tuesday mm -hmm. for opening, the second day after opening day for the Dodgers. And she came to me and told me, you know, I know David would like you to have these tickets. Would you go to the Dodger game with me uh, in honor of Davey's mm -hmm. you know, passing? Oh, my God. My heart just fell. Yeah, really. And now that I see, and even before when he, every time we saw a Dodger game, he'd always tell me what was going on behind the scenes, which gave me back the love of baseball because mm -hmm. I've always loved baseball. I just didn't know the ins and outs of it. So we used to go to Dodger games all the time. So for me to go to this Dodger game and go in his honor, I, I understand what you're saying, Van Eric. You kind of go with some kind of melancholy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you have your highs where you're happy that you're celebrating his life, but then you kind of have this depression or this sadness mm -hmm. of, man, you miss that person. Yeah, you and do. I'm pretty sure you guys go through the same thing with Daryl because I, I knew your father. Yeah, I mean, you did. He, he was came a to huge my house. Dodger fan. Yeah. Oh, yes. I've called him several times just the time the Dodgers are winning. I know wow. that. I've wow. called him randomly. Mm -hmm. Also, Lakers. We were, we were big Lakers fans. Yeah. He was a Lakers mm -hmm. fan as well. Mm -hmm. So And you too, Seth. You know, from your standpoint, not having a family and um, just kind of having everybody weigh in some of the things that have been challenging for you right now. Is that kind of, you know? About dad? Or? Well, dad or your life in college. Just in or, general. Yeah. yeah, just in general. I'm going to tie this in with the Easter message. I am. It's uh, it's different at sometimes. Uh, just when I think about uh, all the things that he didn't get to see, like me graduating from high school or getting accepted into college. But at the same time, um, I didn't like. I I know that he's like rested finally and not as much pain as he was. Mm -hmm. So, but 
yeah, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I'm accepting of it, but but yeah, there's a lot of loss in life. Yeah, because I remember one point you told me, you know, there's some things that you could really use his help, and then he's not he's not here. Yes, for you to ask. The computer things, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, he could always just fix anything, which is always good. Yeah. Well, the whole the whole thing of what reason why I was I'm glad everybody weighed in is because that's so the Easter message. I mean, Pastor was talking about today about how people really did not really understand Jesus and understand what he was all about. You know, we had a concept of what we thought, but even when he was crucified, they didn't really believe that he was going to be resurrected again. And therefore, yeah. you know, you 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 have these hopes, you watch this big powerful figure talking about how he was going to save the world and save their lives and then to be crucified on that cross. It, it kind of shattered their image. Shattered their image, shattered everything. But shattered the image that they had in their mind right. as human beings. And I like what Pastor said when he says, we want a president, not a king. Right. That was and that was awesome. That was such a great yeah, line. Because a president Christ. you can we can vote in, we can mm-hmm. you know, you can you weigh in with that, Van Eric? What do you what do you see? Um, well, um, that's good. I'm glad you remember that. Yeah, I, I, there's not much more I can say about that. Um, but um, that's a good way of putting it. Mm-hmm. Very well. Yeah, because our image of what we had Christ was was the image that we wanted right. as Christ. Right. And like Pastor was saying, how a lot of a lot of his messages were kind of just over our heads because we don't have that understanding. We don't. But because of God's grace, He keeps searching for us. Yeah. How did and He, he talks that? about uh, coming from darkness into light. Yeah, God that we can define. Yeah, and I exactly. thought about that in, in terms of the disappointment. I thought by serving God, this was going to happen. I, you know, I had this. Thank you for saying that. How my life was going to look, how it was going to play out. I was with a friend last night. We were, by the way, Temptation is a wonderful movie. That that Tyler Perry is just, yeah, he, he keeps is incredible. Out. I mean, the message that he gave in that, male and female. Well, very quick, I'm going to throw a shout out. Tyler Perry, when you're ready to do a film yeah. about Lolita. We're here. Yeah. Her book is out, Shaped by the Master's <laughs> Hand. I think I sent you a copy. Let us know. Get in touch with us. But, yeah. Cause but I, go on. Yeah. The steps on how to, you know, what I went through in therapy, see me a crazy, crazy, but you know, the God that Jesus came for a purpose and we all put onto him what we think he's going to do, what his kingdom was here for. And it wasn't to set up a kingdom here. It was to set up a kingdom in the spiritual realm. And so. We have a, he has a plan for our lives. It's not necessarily what we want. Are we like Van Eric said? Are we still gonna? This is where my test, my faith is being tested in these places. Exactly, exactly. And um, like um, just to piggyback on on, on Lolita, um, when I came out here, um, this wasn't my my plan mm-hmm. <laughs> to do what I'm doing right now. This is God's um plan for me. What was your plan? Well, I, I'm a general contractor, so I came out here to do just that, get my you know contractor's license and, and pursue and, and get my own business uh, and doing so. Um, but that wasn't God it. had another that, time. That Did that he was, close all the doors on you? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 because um, I would... I would go, you know, nobody would hire me. Um, I'll get a job. And then, you know, that was just for a short time. time. And he was always sending me back to the, to this radio um, business. And eventually it was like, you know, Homer Simpson. Oh, duh. You know, mm-hmm. this is what you want me to do. Mm-hmm. And I can relate to that. You know, I, I, mm-hmm. I managed a successful martial arts academy in Fullerton. Yeah, we're what doing were you great. Going to be doing? Yeah. I, I mean, at our high point, I had 280 students. Wow. When I started that academy, there was 60. Mm-hmm. So I brought it up 280, and I'm thinking, you know, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But I remember, and I always say this, you spoke to me directly, and I think it was God talking through you, saying that God has you there for a different purpose, and it's not financial, and mm-hmm. it's not prestige, it's not your position. So I stood there, and eventually God pulled me out in his time in a good way, mm-hmm. not in a way of saying, I'm out of here, forget you. No, he mm-hmm. pulled me out in a graceful way. Mm-hmm. And all the relationships that I built there, I still have. Mm-hmm. It was it's, it's really amazing God's plan over our, our own plan. Our oh, own it is. Own. It is. I'm going to ask God. Seth to weigh in because he's trying to figure out what his plan is. Radio? Uh-uh. I, <laughs> we're up here every week. I, you know, I want to be Whitney Houston and, or whatever, but uh, it, it is. It's, it's so phenomenal. I'm glad you guys are saying this because he does have a plan. He died on on Friday. It looked like everything was over, and then he resurrected. And I think that's the that's the whole point. That even when we go through these losses, 
you know, there is a new life. There is a new, like you're in a new career, really. How long have you been doing radio, Van Eric? Um, going on four years. Okay. That's it. But I've done, I've, um, the contracting work ever since I was a little, uh, when I was a teenager, because I have two uncles, um, my uncle Charles, his, you know, and mm-hmm. my uncle Lloyd, that's what they did. Mm-hmm. And they would grab me and, um, have me work with them. You know, they paid me well. I worked for it, but they paid, <laughs> they mm-hmm. paid me well back mm-hmm. then, you know, so, you know, but, um, that's all I did. That's all I know. So, um, this well, that's is something it. brand that's, new. Like you said, that's very interesting because, you know, Pastor was talking about darkness into light and he talked about a new believer and a new believer he, he, he resonated with faithful faith is personable. Mm-hmm. He talked about a weeping woman and he talks about faith is direct from God. You have a relationship, a personal relationship. Well, well, he was talking about new believer uh, was even with the disciples. He was talking about, um, I think it was John. Yes. They, <laughs> even when Jesus said that he was going to be crucified and come back. And when the tomb was empty, they were like, well, where, the, where, where, where is he? They didn't believe until they actually, even though they walked with him for three years, Mm -hmm. they were really basically new believers because they had had the head knowledge, but not the relationship. Right. And that's what he was talking about today. And that was so, that was so powerful to me that sometimes we do miss the big message of, of faith. And because I like that he said that God gives us the grace to have the faith. Yeah. It isn't something that. But we're we, having to walk in it now in, yes. these, in these really quiet places. And that's I'm learning more about, like he said, faith now in these hard places because it was hard this weekend. I had no feeling towards anything, but I just had to keep putting one foot in front of the other. I was right there with you. Lolita. you know? Even some of the things that I'm very joyful for doing, I was very melancholy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then I had some down times and I had some some higher times, but it was really volatile. I'm sure. So, you know, Seth would have. What's all this for someone who doesn't even know his path yet? What what do you, how do you weigh in with this, and with East to the message? About which part? Well, just how you're going through your your walk and how you are having some challenges, but yet having some victories. How do you cope with that? How do you just go day after day? Um, just to remember um, that it's always there, and um, Easter is a Really great time on um on Friday at my church we watched Passion of the Christ oh. and that's always such an intense movie it's probably about my third time watching it it's just it's such a huge reminder of how much um, he went through and how much he really cares about us and yeah and sacrificed for for everything and it was just a great reminder it's always great to watch and just also. But I like yeah. I like what you're saying about remembering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. sometimes we have to remember what he went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but, but I was more gonna go more on our level. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you remember your father when the things he did do. You remember, you know, your brother and the things that you did with him. Mm-hmm. You remember your mother and still have dinner. I remember my friend. So I think remembering. Right. And reminding us through through like you said the movie Passion of the Christ mm-hmm. reminds us to stay in the moment. Right. To mm-hmm. stay in the moment. And that resurrection, grateful. resurrection is here. It might not be the way that we think it is, mm-hmm. but He is doing things. You know, we might not understand it, might not be on the level. I'm enjoying. I'm having a very peaceful Easter. Same here. Same it's, there it's, you go. It's you better. Go. It's peaceful and, and, now. And sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You know, just like He sacrificed. You know, we have to accept the fact that certain things we have to sacrifice mm-hmm. um, right. to 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 keep our faith. Uh, and um, like me, I, you know, I live. I live with three people, me, myself, and I, mm-hmm. you know, and um, for hours, I'm in my place by myself, mm-hmm. with myself, mm-hmm. you know, and I got my my PS3, mm-hmm. you know, and things like that, and, and um, it gives me, it gives me time to mm-hmm. really appreciate um, life, right, and, right, you know, and things of that nature, you know, um, so um, I'm very grateful. Well, it seems like they're having a different well, show than we thought. It sure took a life of yeah. its own. yeah. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back with a special, special surprise event for you today. Lolita is going to be singing off her new CD, Changes. She'll be singing Emmanuel off her new album, where you can find on cdbaby.com. 
or you can go to lrcministries.com or you can go to my website at jhrmanagement.com and find out more about her new CD changes. And, and she'll be performing live after this commercial break. And I want to thank mm-hmm. Seth for being with us. Yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> nice being here. Stay tuned, nice. ladies and gentlemen. This is Joy in My House. I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid and no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hi, I'm Ro Williams and I would like to invite you to join GospelRhythms.com every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our show GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio. Join us as we celebrate Christians around the world in all genres of entertainment, as well as highlight interest stories on men and women who are making a difference and impacting their community. So don't forget to tune in to GospelRhythms.com, Talk Live Radio, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes under r and or watch us live on Ustream TV. We are reality radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is GospelRhythms.com, Talk Live Radio, on LATalkLive.com. We're more than just talk. We're Heaven's Party here on Earth. A king who died 
a despised man, compassionate high priest, the one who understands, made a way for you and me to hold the Father's hand, Emmanuel. Special in studio guest Seth Robinson for coming on the show. Thanks, no problem. I want to remind you all Thank to join so us much. next week uh, with the co producer uh, of Home Run the Movie. If you haven't seen it, it'll premiere April 7th out in theaters uh, with Scott Elrod, Dorian Brown, and Vivica Fox. The co producer, Micah, will be here next week on Joy in My House. Ladies and gentlemen, have a blessed day and hope that you find the joy that we have in our house, That's right. even Happy through the Easter. mist. Have a great and happy Easter. Be blessed, ladies and gentlemen. This is Joy in My House. Bye-bye.